Kelly is going to be sporting the Brazil uh, Rash Guard. David's sporting the Droobs MMA and Jiu-Jitsu, our gracious host, um, one of their students. I'm super excited for this matchup. Um, we've got two blue belts here. Fun fact, David actually just got his blue belt two weeks ago, but he's at, he came from Rutgers as a wrestler, so he's definitely more than happy to wrestle. I think maybe Cole did his homework and knows that because he pulled guard instantly. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, he wrestled D1 in Rutgers and uh, 125 maybe, I think. Was... Yeah, 125, 135, he's, he's a small guy. He knows how to cut. He's big for that weight though. Yeah, he is, he's, he's bigger for the weight. Cole Kelly's gonna be out of movement arts. Initially started training at 352 Jiu Jitsu and he said he does he does still some make some time around here. He's also a vet of our last arena, right? Did yes. He... So he came away with the win after suffering the quickest submission of the night um, in round one to kick off the card. I think he got uh, ankle locked in 12 seconds or so. Yeah, it was quick. And then he came back and dominated the rest of the match and utilized a uh, Kimura from Z Guard setup to be able to attack the back and get a rear naked choke and then finish with the same setup. Yeah, absolutely. This looks like it's going to be a fun match for sure. We did um, a lot of Instagram polls ahead of time and had people bet on what they thought. David, David Campbell came in at 57%. People thought thought he would win. And then Cole had 43%. So I'm curious to see how accurate it's going to be. Pretty good pass by. He's going to look to pass here. David is on top. Trying to control the hips if he can, side to side passing. David's using a lot of distance passing here, trying to control the feet. Yeah. Cole's been successful so far of retaining guard, which means that he's getting his legs to be the barrier between him and David, because David wants to get past his legs essentially right now. And those legs are in the way, his legs are very dangerous. He can set up his submission with those. The interesting thing is how Cole feels so comfortable in just a generalized open supine guard which I think uh, we could probably attribute to Nick Salas and Danny Myra uh, after training with them briefly at their gym. They are very good supine guard players, and Cole looks more than comfortable in that position. Absolutely. He looks like he's really waiting for Dave to commit and come in and get more chest to chest, and he's going to keep those. He seems very flexible and able to keep his knees and then create space and maybe grab a limb as Dave's trying to create that chest to chest contact. Absolutely. He seems like he's going to be more the reactionary player based on what David does. So I'm excited to see if he's going to look to enter into legs or onto the back and how David's going to control that. So David almost into the closed guard. We're going to, he's going to find himself there in closed guard, posturing down. Even though David's on top here, it's actually a very good spot for Cole to be in because he's entrapping Dave's hips with his legs. So even though he's on top, it's it's not great to be here. He's going to want to pass those legs still. Guard is open. He looks like he's going back and forth between closing and opening. You guys notice Cole actually has his, uh, his hooks underneath David's legs. He could use them to stretch him out. Uh, but instead, David's going to opt to use the cage, which is a smart decision, and he's out of the closed guard. Again, looking to flank, David is on top. He's going to try to pass towards that left there. Cole still comfortable on the bottom in that generalized open super guard. Two on one for Cole. David just relentless with his passing pressure, though. Absolutely. David's trying to, trying to get some decent throw buys and just create a lot of opportunity to finish a pass here. It seems like Cole is really, really comfortable uh, just letting David grab on his feet and pull him by. And it seems like he really wants to try and catch something in that injury. I see here. David's doing a good job of throwing the legs by, but I think what he needs to do is really control the hips to keep the, the back into the mat. Cole has very good hip mobility because they're not being controlled, and that's just getting his guard back to retention every time. Exactly, and, and it's making it dangerous for Dave as he's trying to finish the pass and create that chest-to-chest -chest pressure and because he gets a knee inside there and immediately starts going in on the arm. Like this. Arm to back connection here. Cole could have something. David's in a little bit of a problem here. He's doing a good job though, trapping the right foot over. Cole looking to invert in on that left arm of David's. Cole's got a good 
He's got a good Kimura trap system. He sometimes uses it to take the bat, sometimes he uses it to roll into the arm bar, sometimes he sets up triangles from here. So he has a lot of options, but Dave's doing a good job at keeping his hands gripped and not letting uh, Cole work anything in that system. He's also doing a really good job of staying calm despite the position he's in. Cole looking to take the bat here, slide his hooks in. And that's time. All right. Oh, that was a quick round, it felt like. Yeah, that felt like a quick round. That was, uh, that was very... The exchanges there at the end, I'm sure David is happy that the round ended there. Cole probably would have liked to have gotten there three minutes earlier. Yeah, that was really cool to watch. He transitioned from like a saddle position to a re almost like a reverse triangle right to the back. It was really cool. Yeah, really and that's cool. Uh, very similar to how he got his finish in uh, round two in his last match, was he utilized that Kimura grip to step around and come, come around to the back, and then he got a uh, rear naked choke finish. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's a very good setup. So, from an adjustment standpoint, I think one of the things that uh, Cole can really do is try and initiate. Um, he's being very reactionary. Obviously, it worked out well for him in terms of he was able to get on the back. But the problem was, he wasn't able to get on the back until there was minimal time left in the round. He can alleviate a little bit of that by trying to initiate more. Um, I agree. I would like to see Cole Kelly be a little bit more offensive. I get, you know, playing on the bottom, he's waiting for David to come to him, but he's not really generating much going on on the bottom until David even touches him. I'd, I'd like to see him try to enter in some type of guard. You know, we saw last match, it was a good strategy to wait till that last round to get a submission, but it's also a good strategy to really initiate and get the match over with sooner than later, right? Because you don't want to be tired in these later rounds, especially with a guy like David Campbell who has a background in wrestling. Yeah, so you, know his you know his gas tank is, is up there. Very nice float over. Looks like David was trying to force a half guard and just missed, ended up in the closed guard, had a good little bit of a scramble, and now he's back out, we're back in the same spot. Again, David's hands on Cole Shins. David looking to create some type of angle, some type of way to get past that guard. Cole, again, being the reactionary player, just kind of like holding it down. I'm curious if his strategy is to almost get into like unlimited overtime because yeah. he's really not looking for subs and David is exerting a lot of energy on the top trying to force pass him. Yep, absolutely. Like at this point, even in these exchanges here in this moment, right, Cole isn't really moving. He's not exerting any energy. And even that, you can see Dave is moving. His feet are active. He's trying to pick a plan. And each time he commits to something, an attack of some sort, he's exerting energy. And Cole only has to match just enough to keep himself in a guard position. And, and this could get tiring for David. Absolutely. It is, it is a good strategy idea for sure. David's actually only been training jiu-jitsu for uh, five and a half months now, so it's even impressive just to see him in this scenario, keeping pace with Cole, who has a, has a very good plan here. David looking to come down at knees, level changing, now he's back up to his feet. And that's a really big point, right? Obviously, uh, whenever we see wrestlers and specifically division one wrestlers step into uh, you know jiu-jitsu and e submission like, they tend to do very well but one of the things that really gives them the advantage is uh, a points-based system and so to see someone like david come in to a round and a, a tournament or competition and submission only you got to really respect that because it takes away a lot of the natural and advantages that the wrestlers come in with because there is potentially unlimited overtime, which is something they're not used to. They're used to much shorter, quicker bursts. And then also there's uh, no incentive for takedowns or you know, getting a short burst, quick scoring opportunity, and then being able to win off of that. He's really kind of making the instant. We're getting a really active guard passing here from David. Very active, very active. I just Hope he's not exerting all of his energy on this round two. We're three and a half minutes in here. He's moving very quickly with those with his feet. But the other thing is there's still the distance there, right? Absolutely, yep. He can't pass the guard without creating chest to chest pressure at some point. And he needs to eventually get past the legs with something that's going to 
not allow Cole to be able to bring his leg in, whether that's knee on belly or chest to chest, something. He's passing from such a far outside position and Cole's waiting for him to step in that um, it could get very tiring for Dave. I know something uh, Danny Myra and Nick Salas teach very often is framing on yourself. So what their students will do is if you see Cole's arms, he has one arm on each of his uh, knees, depending on which side uh, David is going to. So right now his right arm is uh, protecting the right knee. He'd be framing on, his, on himself on the right. So what the David would need to do is actually try to break control over where he's framing on himself so he can control the hips and knees. Even maybe possibly like thinking of leg pinning passing to help pass that guard or generate some movement. Leg pinning would be really, really good here because specifically every time Dave gets to a side, you see Cole's knee immediately on that side comes up to his chest. And that's how he was able to enter into that Kimura trap last time. So he used the knee to frame away, locked up the arm, and then was able to isolate and use that to take it back. And a leg pin passing system really shut down Cole's ability to do that. Here's a question. Do you think we'll see a reverse of position ever where, where David is guard playing and Cole is on the top? Looks like we have a little like five seconds here, so we're not going to see it this round. And time. Uh, Good round. I'd like to see a little more action from Cole Kelly's corner. It looks like he's primarily just playing guard right now, so I think maybe in round three he'll, he'll hype it up a little. I think he got hit in the nuts here at the end of the round. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting for these guys to play around. I'm assuming that Cole's going to immediately sit right to guard. I don't think he wants to wrestle. Yeah, him. I agree. Uh, and David is probably going to start with that passing sequence. But I want to see if David's going to switch up um, the style of passing. I think your comment on like passing was exactly what really um, can be beneficial. So I'm sure Cole's all right. Yeah, it looks like we have a little bit of a party uh, foul, but we're back to it. We're going to get back to it in a minute here. A party foul. <laughs> That's a, that, is, that is what it should be called in all forms of combat sport. All right, so we're heading into round three. Again, this is another five minute round. And then if there's no submission in this round, it goes to an unlimited overtime until there is a submission. If there is a submission in this round, this will be the winner, the clear winner, because it is the best of three. All right, so again, Cole Kelly pulling. He's all the way into supine guard. He's framing on his right with his right hand. David trying to grab the ankles, grab the shins, control. He wants to, he needs to get past this guard to create any sort of submission threats. Now, obviously, he can always drop back on the leg, and that actually was one thing. That's a good idea. That was one of the things that that Cole uh, kind of showed as a weakness in the last match, was specifically leaving that big attack and drop down from open guard and just finish it up from straight ankle. But David's got, he's got body lock underneath. Looks like he is starting to work around. And this is a huge change of pace here. Cole did a good job, though, of recognizing that his one leg was in butterfly on the left and his other was not. And he ended up bringing both of them in. So now David looking to uh, pass is going to be a little bit more difficult, but he's doing a good job of staying on the lower back. Almost, almost. And now he's out. We're back to where we were. This is this is their general spot, I feel like, for this match. Yeah, but that was a big change. That was, so that that was, was a, a good big, spot. The first time I've seen David really change, got either really change the strategy of how they're approaching this kind of neutral open guard position. Low passing could be the key here for David if he could get back into that. It seemed like that was something that really helped his game there. Cole looks like he's pretty strong in closed guard, so I'm wondering if maybe that's a fear of David's when if he if he misses and he ends up in the closed guard, he has to be careful. Yeah, absolutely. David looking to control the legs, but Cole has great frames. Oh, leg pin. There was the All was right, a little bit a little bit of the leg, leg pin. Passing. Made famous by the Ritulo brothers there. Yes. Good thought. Another head lift there. If David can try to stack the legs like that again, but really solidify that position, I think he can get a really nice pass off of that. I like the idea of stacking, but in Nogi, I think as they get sweatier, it's a lot harder to stack because Cole's going to be able to drive his back uh, back every time. I see. And so I think it would be hard to do that, or he, even if he gets too high, he might roll through, just in my experience at least. 
Yeah, and it can be tough with a real good guard player too. When you're when you're coming in from such a far outside position in no game, a lot of times they can just keep the leg inside, keep an arm inside, and lock up a quick triangle or throw up a quick arm bar threat when you're trying to dive in. Um, you see people like who are very successful, like Nicky Rod, um, at shooting from outside straight into body lock passing. Um, and I could see that being something that maybe David might employ here, especially as Cole sits up. Right, it's really tough to shoot in from that suit when the opponent's playing in a true supine position. But the second the pull sits up, that might give David the ability to shoot in into that bottom pass. Yeah, absolutely. I completely, completely agree with that. We are over halfway in round three. Three minutes in. I think that. We have a painful arm on the right side. It looks yeah, like there's think, an issue with David's arm. I think David uh, posted his arm on the mat as he was trying to pass, and it seemed like he might have. It seemed like he made it back. It's like Cole might have a change of pace here too. They're up against the wall. Cole looking to use the cage against David here. David Cole, not in a good spot. Cole should try and slap him down, but it looks like David's arm is still really bothering. Him. Yeah, absolutely. He just let go not really getting any grips there on that right arm. Yeah, and he was Her pulling. left arm, I'm he, sorry. He's, he might he might have broken his wrist. Uh, Good attempt at a shot by David. Pulls back up to his feet, and he's going to pull. That's... I think Cole might have a Kimura on the far side, which is now gone. But David's going to find himself in the closed guard. Cole looking to make his legs go a little bit higher in the closed guard here. Getting really good posture down. We're at 418. We have a triangle locked in. David's arm's still on the right side. He's going to need to stack and get to the left side here to try to get out. This is a big moment. We have 30 seconds left in this match. David trying to protect his right arm. I'm sorry, David's gonna have to walk to the right side to get out. The good thing is you can still see a little bit of David's shoulder, which means that triangle is not quite angled tight yet, and it's pulls be, up against the cage. Yeah, it's gonna be really tight. So it's he's really looking to try to get it there, especially but with short time here. Cole readjusting with about really, five really seconds tough. left. Looks like we might be going to an overtime. Oh, we got a tap. Oh, we got a tap. All right. Yep, we got the tap. We got the tap in. Triangle, like, 459. Ooh, 459. Wow. Yeah, Cole Kelly wins round three. Wow, round three, four minutes and 59 seconds. Hopefully David's arm is all right. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we're going to be talking to Cole Kelly here in a minute. In a minute. Possibly. <laughs> He's, laying He's currently down. laying on the floor. All right, we have Cole Kelly here with us out of Movement Arts, coached by Marky out of Logic today. How do you feel? Cool. <laughs> I'm here to play guard. Got to do what I want. Did you have a generalized plan? Like, what were you thinking about I on the back? I knew he was a good wrestler because I like saw him on your Instagram and stuff. So I knew I was going to pull guard. I feel pretty confident in my guard game against like anybody. So. Just, I got it. So do you know what do you know what the time was on that tap? There was 20 seconds left, so I stuck my fist in his neck, and then so you, you got the tap at four minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff at the end of round three. What's up on your agenda for the future? Yeah, um, I'm gonna do worlds at blue belt like next year at Nogi, and go to Tampa to do IBJJF. I just want to win Worlds next year. Cool. That's awesome. And uh, so now this is your second time uh, competing under the arena banner. Yeah. What do you What do you think of the rules? I like it honestly better than like it doesn't help me the most because it's in the cage and I don't really like being near the cage. But like for just a straight up grappling thing, like there's no time limit or anything. So like I like the, I don't really like the points. And the submission only kind of sucks when you get into overtime. Yeah. Like I've gotten overtime a couple times and the dudes are just way stronger than me. And, like they are no threat to be like the whole time. Like the like first six overtime. minutes. Then they go to overtime and they just rip an arm bar on me. Yeah. And I get and I don't get the arm bar in like two seconds, so 
end up losing. So yeah, I definitely like this a lot. Yeah, you've had a lot of success, you know, two and out. Yeah. Both times with uh, submissions. I think you had a submission in round two and three last time. And yeah. This one with a, a very, very late round three submission. So congratulations. Thank you. Anybody, you want anything else you want to say? Anybody you want to shout out or anything? Um, my coaches at Movement Art and my other coach, Kevin Barr, 352. Basically. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Congrats. Thank awesome. you.